What's up guys, it's Yvonne. In this video, I want to show you how to properly track your Bing ads. So incredibly important, we've done that in, uh, in, the, in the Google series, but it was a little bit different. So I'll, I'll show you how you can track it properly here because if you have a tracking link, you can't just put the tracking link here. You may, and, and it may or may not work. Um, however, in, even if you do that, you will be missing out some really, really cool and useful information. So let me show you uh, what you would do. So as we've discussed in the previous video, video where we first set up our uh, ad, we put in our uh, URL, we put it in here, okay? So we put it in the final URL section. Now here's where you would actually track it. And this is something that the Bing and the Google reps, they don't really tell you about. I, I asked them several times when I was first doing this. They had no idea. They said, just don't use it. You should use it. It is incredibly useful, especially if you're using click magic, super useful thing. So here's the thing. Here's the tracking template. So when you click on your ad, go to add URL options. And over here, it's going to say add a tracking template. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our click magic. We're going to take our tracking link. So um, if, if, if you're not using click magic, you're using some other, um, tracking, uh, program, just take your tracking link and put it there. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Um, what, what I'm about to show you here may, um, but basically if you're using click magic, take this, let's put it down there. And now what we can do is we can use sub ID. So in one of my previous videos, I've discussed that that's how you determine your traffic sources. You add cool little sub IDs at the end. So if I say, for example, Bing ads slash add one, uh, if someone clicks on this ad and it shows up in my click magic, guess what? I'll be able to know that, Hey, this click came from Bing ads add one. And the cool thing is I'll be able to know that if there's an action or engagement or a sale that this resulted from this particular click, from this particular keyword, which will allow me to optimize that keyword and remove the keywords that are not performing. If there's a hundred keywords that are getting you zero sales and there's one keyword that's out of 50 clicks getting you 10 sales, guess what? Remove all the other ones, put this one in, okay? That's what you can do here. So what we can do here is with the use of sub IDs, we can use these tokens. So let's go here to uh, pay per click. So I will send you this click magic link below. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure if it will work with with other networks. It may or may not. I, I just really don't know. But tr try it out if you're not using click magic. Um, and here, uh, here's Bing's query string token. So, so, so here's all the tokens you can use. Now, Bing has an additional token over Google, and that is query string. And this is also pretty cool because what this tells you is um, what exactly the user typed in. So the keyword we used for Google was just keyword. Let me just find it somewhere here, here, keyword token, right? So you put it in those squiggly brackets and what that's going to do. So, so let, let me just tell you, if, if I, if I copy that and I put it as a sub ID, what that's going to do is now that's going to tell me what keyword triggered a click on this ad and what keyword works. So you know what? You don't even have to now click add one, add set one as your sub IDs. You can just type the keyword in and then you'll know which, which keyword corresponds to which ad group, right? And you, you'll know what to optimize. So you can do that. So you can type in keyword. Now what this query string is, is it's basically, uh, it's basically telling you, so let me just put that in. I can put it as another sub ID. Uh, that's basically telling you what the person typed in exactly. So the keyword will be what keyword triggered the ad. The query string is what the user typed in. They may not be the same. Uh, in our video on broad match modifiers, you saw that um, I can put in, you know, plus flying plus monkeys, which means as long as those two words are there in any order um, and any additional words, my ad will show. So if people type in buy flying now monkeys, my ad will show. That's what they typed in query string. But the keyword that will show up is just flying monkeys. So that's how the two are different. So th that's a piece of information you may want to have. You may not up to you. You can analyze this in the Bing dimensions tab, okay, uh, which, which we'll get over as well, similar to Google. So let's go back here. So you can use all these as well. So you can actually uh, track the exact ad group ID, the ad group, the ad ID, the campaign ID, the campaign, the device, if it's mobile, laptop, tablet, um, network. So whether it's Bing or an, an AOL or maybe Yahoo ads, it will just say S for that. Um, match type, whether it was exact. Based. These are details. I personally don't use this. Honestly, all I use is keyword. Uh, guilty as charged, but but these are some something you know. If if you find them valuable, if you want to test it out or try it out, by all means, that's available to. So let's go back here. Uh, now this little um, 
guide tells you that sometimes Bing's keyword token does not work. And uh, it, it, it has always been working for me, but in the case it doesn't, um, they just recommend just using query, uh, query string. So just not even using keyword, okay? So I haven't come across that where it didn't work for me, uh, but if it doesn't just use query string instead of um, keyword, okay? So that's basically what, what they're doing here. Uh, the other thing is on your click magic, we only have room for two sub IDs. So um, if we click on this, for example, well, we don't have anything there, but it would show you uh, two sub IDs here. Otherwise you have to download it. So what I would recommend you do here is you can either just keep it to two sub IDs, right? Um, which really I, I think are the most important ones, or you can separate them all by dashes. So what you can do is let me just delete that. Uh, and I can put a little dash there. And this way I can separate, so I can have everything in one sub ID, but they'll be separated by dashes. So keyword, dash, query string, dash, whatever else you want to see. And then when you go back to your ClickMagic statistics, it will show you here, for example, under sub ID one, that will be this. So it will show you the keyword. And then under sub ID two, it will show you the query string. And then, sorry, in this case, because they're separated by a dash, they will all be under one sub ID, but it will say, you know, um, keyword dash um, query string dash whatever else you put in okay if you don't then it will show in sub id one and sub id two and then sub id three you will have to download up to five you have five spots for that so uh, that's about it really useful information because you can really figure out kind of everything all in one place so if you're running google facebook and bing ads you can just run everything and, and see all the results together here in your click magic right you you can see the exact uh, stats in addition sometimes statistics for bing or google or facebook may not be uh, super accurate Accurate. So this is just a source you can use to verify and bring some helpful information. And now you know what the tracking template is. So that's about it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.